feelings. Some of them are pleasant and we want more of them. Some of them are unpleasant and we want less of those. But if we try to solve this dilemma by numbing ourselves, whenever we experience unpleasant emotions, feelings, and sensations, in the end, those unpleasant feelings will accumulate and grow. Stay tuned to learn about numbing and how to let go of it. Hey everyone, welcome to Becoming an Expert at Self-Leadership. I'm Micah, a psychologist, and I recently shared the following Brené Brown quote in a Facebook group. When we stop numbing and start feeling and learning again, we have to reevaluate everything, especially how we choose loving ourselves over making other people feel comfortable. And a lot of the comments beneath this quote asked in one way or another, how do I do that? How do I stop numbing? And some people shared that, unfortunately, it's so hard to do. And I agree, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but it is possible when we understand what it is and how to step out of those patterns. And that's where I want to help with this video. What is numbing? Numbing is something that every single one of us knows in some form or another. It contributes to addiction, but it's more than that. It's everything we do to escape from difficult inner experiences that eventually causes more of those difficult inner experiences to pile up. These experiences could be anxiety, doubt, frustration, exhaustion, stress, anger, inner emptiness, feeling unloved and unseen, being confronted with uncertainty, feeling out of control, really any kind of inner pain and discomfort. There are lots of different things we do to numb these feelings, and it's more about why we do it than about what exactly we do, although that's also part of it. Numbing can take many different forms, and it always comes from the intention of finding instant relief, no matter what the long-term consequences of that are. So you can't always easily tell from the outside whether something that someone is doing is numbing or a healthy nourishment for body and mind. In the end, it depends on that person's intention and that's something we can only judge ourselves. From the outside, what one can observe is that usually it takes more and more of the thing that we are using to numb ourselves, so it gets excessive. And we can also start to depend on it in a compulsive way that makes it seem like we can't have a good time anymore without it. And eventually there will be consequences for health, relationships, and all sorts of areas for life for a lot of the things that we can use to numb ourselves. Typical things we use and do to numb ourselves are food, alcohol, busyness, legal and illegal drugs. It can also be prescription medicine, shopping, TV, caffeine, energy drinks, sugar. And it can also be more subtle and psychological, like worrying, disengaging and pulling back, or that rush of hormones that comes from criticizing, fault-finding, gossiping, complaining. The costs of numbing. Since numbing doesn't take care of the root causes of issues, but just cuts the weeds above the ground, one major cost of numbing is that issues don't get taken care of and they accumulate and grow. So numbing leads to more of what we're trying to feel less of by numbing. Another huge cost of numbing is also that it costs us the subtlety and intensity of our positive inner experiences as well. Think of a beautiful forest that you've been to. Think of all the beautiful plants, fruits, smells, sounds, and animals that are there. Now you can probably also think of some less pleasant characteristics of that forest. Maybe there are mosquitoes there or a stinging nettle. The approach of numbing would be to say, let's cut this forest down. 
the mosquitoes are a nuisance. Wow. Think of everything we'd miss out on by cutting the whole forest down. It's the same with the forest of our inner experiences. If we decide to avoid it by numbing, we will also limit our capacity to experience love, joy, contentment, and happiness. How to numb less. First, the header for this section of the video was how to stop numbing, but then I thought that's too big of a goal right away. What's a lot more doable is to numb less step by step. It doesn't actually even start with numbing less. It starts with observing the numbing to increase your awareness of it. When do you numb and how? What exactly are you numbing? Where did that come from? What does the numbing feel like? How do you feel afterwards? Consciously experiencing how the benefits of numbing don't outweigh its costs is really important to keep nourishing your motivation. That's also what you can use setbacks for to understand it all better and restock your motivation. Also through this observing and reflecting, you'll get a deeper and deeper understanding of where this inner difficult experience that you're wanting to numb came from. Then slowly you can start changing. And this has two goals. Number one, to learn to address the root causes behind inner difficult experiences so they become less frequent and intense. And goal number two is to learn to make room for and accept the discomfort that is part of life and can't be avoided. I want to discuss goal number one first. Here are three important steps along that path, although they don't necessarily have to be taken in this order. So one of the steps is to work on your mindsets, your beliefs about yourself, other people in the world, to shift them into helpful ones that don't leave you feeling afraid or empty. A big one here is to shift from there is something fundamentally wrong with me to I am enough, I am worthy, I am lovable, I am capable, I am valuable. Number two, stop sacrificing yourself, your values and how you want to live your life just to soothe your fears and keep other people happy. Shift to setting priorities, boundaries, and establishing loving connections that are authentic. Figure out what truly matters to you and let go of everything else. Figure out how to have loving connections and practice that. And number three, so here's the thing about stress hormones. They also numb us. Stress hormones inhibit the feeling of pain in the body. And so often we use stress hormones to numb ourselves. And we get into the cycle of having one stressful day after the other and we can't stop it. And instead of living in that state of being constantly ramped up on stress hormones, that has so many negative consequences that I don't want to get into now. Um, learn to soothe your nervous system to a calm state. And for goal number two, accepting and making room for difficult inner experiences that are part of life and can't be avoided, also start with noticing and observing it. Notice how it's there alongside lots of other things that are going on inside of you. Notice how you can shift your focus of attention to that difficult experience and also onto other parts of yourself and your experience. Notice how you can still take care of the things that you want to take care of and do the things that are important to you even if that difficult experience is accompanying you. Notice how it's your friend, how it's your brain trying to protect you, trying to make sense of the world. How sometimes there's an important message inside difficult inner experiences. Like, next time, set better boundaries or 
Look at this unhelpful belief that is still lurking in that corner. After having heard about this in such a compressed form, this may seem hard, but it's actually only hard to the point of being discouraging if we think that it needs to work like flipping a switch, that starting from tomorrow, no more numbing for me. But we need to remember that we've had a lifetime of practice at numbing and hardly any practice with engaging with difficult experiences. So we need to be kind with ourselves and give ourselves the practice that it takes to develop these skills and to take it step by step, moment by moment, day by day, and to celebrate any small progress that we make along our journey. Thanks for sticking around until the end of this video. If you'd like to see more content like this to support you on your path, remember to subscribe. If you hit the bell, then you'll even be notified. Till next time, take care. And remember that letting go of numbing takes practice and a lot of kind encouragement from yourself on your way there.